What's going on, everybody? It's Stas here. So the stock market sold off today. S&P 500 down 23 points, down 0.7%. The Dow Jones down 165 points, down 0.6%. And the NASDAQ 100 ended up going down 100 points, down about 0.8% on the day. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the stock market a bit further, breaking down some technicals and going over whether or not we're going to be selling off further here. We are seeing a bit of an overbought stock market. So I want to go over my thoughts there. And I also want to break down some earnings reports, a bunch of stocks here that I'm looking to buy. And in general, what I'm doing right now in the stock market. So if you guys find value, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and make sure to join the free Strive Smart Discord chat, free Facebook group, and get your two free stocks from Webull valued up to $1,600. All of those are linked right down below in the description box. So let's get into it, guys. And if you guys have been following my channel for the past couple of days, at least, we've been talking about how the stock market across all of the indexes, S&P, Dow, NASDAQ, Russell, it's been overbought, right? Take a look here. We'll pull up the 30-day chart and you can see pretty much the markets have erased all of the losses from September, right? In September, S&P went from 3590 to 3210 pretty much. And again, we pretty much erased all of that, going all the way close to the all-time highs on the S&P, about actually 40 points away from those all-time highs. And the RSI at that point was pretty much off the page. RSI really just indicates whether or not an index, a stock, an ETF is overbought or not. And you can see the RSI on pretty much any trading platform, charting platform rather, that you use, whether it's Fidelity. Active Trader Pro, whether it's, you know, Thinkorswim, you can see it anywhere, right? And pretty much the way it works is there's a 30 threshold and a 70 threshold. And the closer it gets to 70 and above 70, that is where it's overbought, right? It's, it's, uh, it might not be the best time to get in. And mind you guys, I don't use the RSI to solely pick my stocks, right? I use it as kind of a tool. It's a tool in my toolbox and I use it in combination with a bunch of other things. So don't just use the point. The point there is don't just use one tool like the RSI to make all your decisions. That would be a mistake. Use it to supplement your decisions, right, with other tools as well. And when it gets down to 30 uh, on the threshold here, that means it's oversold, right? And obviously, the market was above 70. It was actually close to 90 on the RSI, which is unbelievable. So we talked about the sell-off, and now the past three days, we've seen selling in the market. Take a look here on the five-day, five-minute. Yeah, we didn't sell off and see a red day on this day, but we ended up closing the day on a red swing. This was on the 12th of October, and pretty much ever since then, we've been downtrending. Take a look at what I'm about to draw here on the S&P. So the question is, how far down can we go? I think the S&P, quite honestly, and I've been saying this on the channel, I think the S&P can get to 3430. And there's a lot of moving parts right now. We have an election coming up in less than 30 days. We have stimulus. They're going back and forth. Democrats, Republicans, they cannot come to an agreement Questions are in the air, such as, are we getting a stimulus before the election? Are we not going to get it before the election? And, and the clock's ticking on that, by the way. And there's everything going on with the president, with the illness, the economy still in shambles. So there's a lot going on right now. And on top of that, it's earnings season. So for me, guys, playing it safe here... I'm stacking up a bunch of cash in my portfolio, right? And off the top of my head, I think I'm about 40 to 50% cash, something like that, in my trading account. And, and that really goes to show where my mindset is at right now. Again, being a bit conservative, understanding that we're heading into a hurricane these next couple of uh, weeks here with everything going on. And quite honestly, we're already in the hurricane, right, guys? So S&P, I think we could sell off further. There's no really sign uh, of a turnaround quite yet on this five-day, five-minute. 
minute, and I'm focusing on this five day, five minute to kind of see short term where we go. And until we're downtrending, or rather, until we break out of the downtrend here on the five day, five minute. I'm not really convinced that we're breaking out quite yet, right? But the second we take this downtrend out and maybe we start to test those highs from earlier today, maybe we break the highs from yesterday and slowly start to go to 35.50, okay, if we do that, then yeah, maybe we start to break out from there. But we're not getting the technical confirmation quite yet. And when it comes down to the Dow Jones here, same thing. We're downtrending the past couple of days we failed to hold what level was this guys 28,700 we failed holding that as a support we got rejected by the moving averages here on the five day five minute now we're looking to go down to 28,400 so 28,400 that is the upcoming support here if we fail to hold that if we fail to hold that we might be going down further. I'd say 28,200 is a target here on the Dow Jones. But mind you, take a look. The 50 SMA here is coming up as a support on the 30-day chart, probably on the hourly chart as well. Yup, we're right at that 50 SMA on these two time frames. So it's going to be an interesting tomorrow and the, uh, the next couple of days here in the market, guys, because technically speaking, yeah, we're selling off, but we're still holding an uptrend. There's a lot of trend lines here, which might make it a bit confusing, but take a look at the one I'm about to draw. If we just draw this out, I mean, this technically is a higher low. That's if 28,400 breaks. So that's a big key spot on the Dow Jones. And I mean, it's the same thing for the S&P. I mean, we're selling off a bit, but overall, we're still holding that uptrend on the hourly chart and that 50 SMA. So tomorrow, quite honestly, and Friday, they're going to be two big decision days in terms of direction in the market. So watch the hourly chart and the five-day, five-minute across all the indexes. Those are very key right now, in my opinion, to determine direction. And when it comes down to the NASDAQ, you guys remember yesterday we drew out this channel. Um, It ended up playing out perfectly today, and, and we really ended up breaking down and showing a bearish sign here. Take a look. We showed this in yesterday's video talking about how the NASDAQ has been bouncing back and forth here. And we went to test the resistance this morning at about 12,150. We tried breaking out, which if we did and we did something like this, that would have been extremely bullish, right? But we failed to do that. We ended up tanking. The NASDAQ 100 ended up doing lower lows, lower highs, and we actually broke the support of this channel, which is a big no-no for the bulls. And we did end up rallying back into the close. We double bottomed here at about 12, 1 p.m. on the East Coast. We rallied into the close after that double bottom, which is good, arguably, for the bulls. But I'm not too convinced that we're going to be flying up quite yet. Honestly, I think, yeah, I mean, we could end up filling the gap up again to 12,115, which would put us right at that resistance of this channel on the five day, five minute. But until we break out of this channel on the upside, I'm not convinced that we're going to rally on the NASDAQ 100. And take a look. I mean, on the four-hour chart, it gives you some perspective. Um, some perspective. I, I messed up my words there a little bit, guys. But take a look. RSI is still a bit overbought. You could argue that the gap might fill down to 11,590, 11,600. I think that's possible. And it goes back to that five day, five minute, right? If we end up tanking tomorrow and we end up taking out the lows from earlier today, that double bottom breakout from earlier today, if we tank and do something like this tomorrow and on Friday, the NASDAQ will be, in my opinion, going down to the mid 11,000s, the NASDAQ 100, that is. And by the way, guys, the NASDAQ 100 is different from the NASDAQ composite. The NASDAQ 100 is the 100 largest in the NASDAQ, while the NASDAQ composite compiles other businesses as well in there. So that's a little key tip if you guys didn't know that, which is why the NASDAQ 100 is a different price from the NASDAQ composite, but on this channel, we pretty much just track 
um, the NASDAQ 100. So overall, guys, what are your thoughts? I mean, I just gave you mine. I think there could be more downside here. The markets are not really showing a breakout, and we're still a bit overbought. So what do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comments on everything that we just discussed. Now let's talk about what I personally did today. And it's funny. Yesterday, guys, I locked in profits on Electronic Arts. And today, I got right back in. I might have gotten back in a bit premature. I'll be honest. I got in at $132.95. But I figured, okay, we did not break out 134 yet, which which is why I might be getting in a bit prematurely here. But we got an analyst upgrade today on Electronic Arts. We can see it here. It went from 140, uh, actually no, from 125 up to 144. That came from Deutsche Bank, um, an analyst upgrade there. And quite honestly, like I said yesterday, you know, there's not too many stocks out there that are oversold, quote unquote, and that offer some upside. And me, yes, I'm in cash, right? I'm in about 40, 50% cash, but I still want to play offense. I figured, let me just let let me just get back into EA. Maybe I got a bit impatient yesterday getting out. Quite honestly, I probably did get a little impatient. So let me take some of that cash. You know, yeah, I have cash set aside for the rainy day, for the volatility for the next couple of weeks, but let me just put some in here and play some offense. And that's exactly what I did. So I'm back in EA at $132.95. And quite honestly, guys, the second this thing breaks 134, this 50 SMA, actually, no, the 180 SMA here on the four hour chart, the second we break out, this thing's going to go bananas. That's just my honest opinion, right? And heading into these next couple of months with video games coming out, the new systems and so forth, I'm bullish. So yeah, this is one that I'm comfortable keeping my money in despite the markets being a bit overextended because this stock itself is not too extended and there is more upside in the next couple of months in my opinion. So I'm back in EA at 132.95 and that's pretty much all I did today. I'm still in Apple AAPL. I ended up locking in profits on half of my position the other day. I'm still in at about 115 bucks and I'm holding strong. I'm liking the way the price action looked today. We actually ended up going green despite the NASDAQ being red. And you guys can see we are seeing some nice consolidation at about 119 to about $120. And we closed the day on a nice little upswing. So Apple is looking like it's holding that 120 level. Level, which is very huge for the bulls out there and it gives me confidence to continue to hold and maybe even add more i know i'm uh, i'm in at about 115 but this is one that i'm actually looking to average into more we'll see how it goes i'm not looking to rush in quite yet heck i might even wait until next week um to get more money into this stock and uh, either way we'll see how it goes I'm long Apple I'm excited about it and if you guys want to see my my overview of what they release in terms of the event the iPhones all that good stuff go check out yesterday's video I'll link it down below in the description box I'll also pin it at the end of the video, if you guys stick, you uh, stick till the end. You guys can click it there, and you could just zoom—not zoom, but fast forward with the timestamps to Apple's part of that video and check it out if you guys want to see an overview of that. So, Apple, I'm long. Workhorse, I'm also long on this one. WKHS, we sold off again today, down about three percent, but not nearly as bad as yesterday, where we went down about thirteen percent. And it went down because of the USPS situation, right? The contract was supposed to be announced on the 13th, but it didn't, guys. And there's a lot of speculation here that Roth, that firm, uh, they actually kind of manipulated it a little bit. They, uh, they, they understood that, hey, they're probably not going to get the contract. And this is all allegedly, guys. This is all allegedly, but they were saying that, hey, Roth ended up pushing up the stock's price, knowing that they're not going to get the contract, and then they ended up shorting it on the way down, 
after the October 13th news came out where they were not going to get the contract quite yet, and the USPS was pushing it back to a later date, later in 2020. So there's a little bit of, I don't want to say sketchiness there, and I'm not accusing them of anything. This is all allegedly, guys. We read this. We've seen this in different forums and articles, and I figured I'm just going to tell you guys here if you guys didn't uh, uh, get that, but there's a lot of people saying that Roth is, uh, you know, maybe, maybe trying to, you know, profit on shorting the stock, knowing that they weren't going to get the announcement. But hey, who knows what's going on? That's just uh, what the the word on the street is here. And for me, I'm in at about twenty four dollars. I'm still holding on to workhorse. I think there's going to be a lot of buyers coming in, especially if we get closer to twenty dollars per share. So I'm down on my position, quite honestly. But I'm not panicking. I'm just holding on. I think there's a lot of potential still, and we'll leave it at that. So WKHS, 24 bucks, and Intel, I'm still in Intel, INTC, in at about 20, or actually no, 50, I wish $20, guys. <laughs> I'm in at about $52.25, and this is one that I'm still up on, and quite honestly, my sell target on this one is is anywhere from 55 to 56. So I'm holding on to INTC, and that's pretty much all I'm doing. I'm in EA, Apple, Workhorse, and Intel. And again, guys, that's about, I'd say, 30 to 40%, maybe half of my account in those positions. And I have a lot of cash on the sidelines due to, quite honestly, everything going on, the volatility, the presidential election, the the stimulus talks, just everything, guys. Cash is a way that you can really allow yourself to have opportunities and, and ride out the storm. So that's what I did. Let me know down below in the comments, what did you guys do? Now let's talk about some earnings reports, starting off with Wells Fargo. And like I've been saying, guys, earnings season is upon us, uh, upon us. And the banks are kicking us off here. We had, what, J.P. Morgan yesterday. We had, who else did we have yesterday? Uh, it doesn't matter. We had J.P. Morgan yesterday. And today we had Wells Fargo, Goldman Sachs, and Bank of America. And Wells Fargo is down 6%. So the stock's not doing too well on earnings that are not that bad, at least from a brief glance. EPS came in at $0.42 cents versus $0.45, cents, so they missed on EPS. And revenue came in at $18.9 billion versus $17.97 billion. So they missed there on revenue by uh, by a billion. So that's, that's a pretty bad miss there, quite honestly. I mean, it's not abysmal. It's not like they missed revenue by 30%, but they missed it by a good chunk. I'd say they missed it by, off the top of my head, about 5 6%, 7%. So they missed there on um, <clears throat> revenue, and the stock, again, is uh, it, it's, it's getting crushed, right? <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. And, you know, this is one that I actually owned in my M1 finance account back a couple months ago, but I actually cut out of it. Thank God, right? And if you guys didn't know, if you sell a position for a loss, you can actually write off that loss against your gains for tax purposes. That's a, that's a, a pro tip there. And make sure to talk to your CPA about that and all of the, uh, you know, the tax nuances when it comes down to trading and investing. But if you're down on a position, right, in, in layman's terms, you can actually take a loss and get into a better stock, at least at least a stock that you think is better, and you can write off that loss against your gains. So Wells Fargo is one that is getting hit. It got rejected, and it seems like the downtrend is continuing. So I wouldn't be surprised if this was to take out the lows from back in the middle of May, right? Considering the company is just in a, it's in a tough spot at this point. And Goldman Sachs, also reported, and their earnings report was pretty solid. EPS came in at 9.68 versus 5.57, so they crushed EPS. They almost doubled it, quite honestly, guys. And another pro tip here, companies can uh, they can uh, manipulate the earnings. EPS, actually, not, not earnings. Well, mostly EPS, right? They can manipulate that number to make it look good, but you can't really manipulate revenue. So I like looking more at revenue, quite honest, for the most part, if I'm looking at a growing business. And banks, I mean, they're not growing like crazy, but 
in general, I like looking at revenue more than EPS, especially for the growth investors out there. That's what I like to do, considering I'm kind of a growth investor at the end of the day. So uh, EPS, 968 versus 557, and revenue beat as well, 1078 billion versus 9.46 billion. So a nice beat there on EPS revenue. Goldman Sachs here is looking like they broke out of 210, big resistance. Now we're looking to hold it as a support with the next big resistance at about 220. So I'm actually liking this. This could be a, a short potential trade here. Not a short as in shorting the stock, but short term trade, maybe from 210 to 220. So I'm watching that like a hawk here. And another one that reported earnings is BAC, Bank of America, which is down as well. Same with Wells Fargo, down about 5.3%. And their earnings were decent. EPS came in at 51 cents versus 49 cents, and revenue came in at 20.34 billion versus 20.81 billion, which missed. So they're getting crushed. Quite honestly, I'm not interested in buying them at this point. If anything, guys, the two banks I'm most interested in are Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan. But hey, we're going to cover all the earnings here on the channel regardless. So BAC got rejected at 25. We're looking like we might go and test that low from back towards the end of September, which is around $23 flat. So maybe we go down there. You know, we'll see what happens. But overall, those are three earnings reports that came out today. And mind you guys, later on in the month, we have a bunch of other ones that are coming out. Chipotle, Netflix, to name a few, and a bunch more. So if you guys are enjoying the video, hit that like button for me, subscribe to the channel, and let's get into some other stocks here that actually got some buy ratings today and price increases. Um, well, I don't know. Actually, no, they didn't get buy ratings. They just got price increases. So CRM is one of them, uh, which is uh, Salesforce.com here. They've been crushing it, doing very well. The stock's gone from 115 to 280. It's it since pulled down to about 230. Now it's running back up to 260. And their price hike came from UBS, and they're actually putting it at $325 per share, which is pretty crazy, guys. And at this point, it went down about 2% today. It seems like it's holding a higher low here on top of that 50 SMA on this four-hour chart. So this very well could be a nice dip heading into maybe 280, 275. And I'm not looking to exit at 325, guys, just because they put a price target hike there. But I, I can see this thing maybe over time getting the 325, but I can definitely see it getting back to 285 in the short term, right? Especially if we end up holding this four hour uptrend that I just drew out for you guys. And it seems like we are. So CRM, keep it on the watch list. I for sure am. I like it anywhere from 260, 255, you know, back up to the 270, 275 area, maybe 280s in the short term. So that's what I'm looking at when it comes to CRM. And let's talk about NEO stock. We had a payday today, guys. Well, if you sold, you had a, pay, a payday. But on paper, we had a payday if you guys own NEO and, and you didn't sell. And uh, it went up 23% today. Unbelievable. Up about $5 per share on a JP Morgan analyst upgrading them to overweight with a $40 price target. And they said that they are a long term winner in the Chinese electric vehicle market. And I've been saying this. I'm very excited that Wall Street's now catching on. I've been saying this for two years at this point. Well, maybe not two years, maybe like a year and a half. But if you guys have been watching the channel, I mean, I've been talking about NEO for a while. I've been buying the stock since the $6 range. I bought some, believe it or not, it's crazy, at the $2 range. I bought some at the $5 range. You know, I've been buying this stock for a month, not a month and a half, a year and a half at least, and I've been riding it up. And at this point, guys, I really haven't added much to my initial position, but it, it, it's just, you know, on paper, the gains are insane. I mean, I'm up, ah, gosh, I, I've got to be up like hundreds of percent. I mean, it is hundreds of percent. I'm up like, 
I got to check my account, but it's it's like 600, 700%. I mean, this thing is insane, right? And uh, at this point, we called, not saying we called out the breakout, but we talked about how, okay, Neo was in this little wedge a couple weeks ago. It's It was consolidating. And you guys can see the pattern that Neo has. We get a leg up consolidate for a little bit, get into a wedge, break out, consolidate a little bit, get into a wedge, break out. We've done it multiple times here on the four hour chart and we, we did it again. We consolidated a bit from the 28th of September to the 12th of this month, October. So we consolidated for two weeks and we broke out on this, this upgrade here. So in the short term, guys, I really would not chase Neo because we might see another set up like we saw two weeks ago where we consolidated a little bit, we pulled down a little bit. I wouldn't be surprised if Neo cooled off from 27 bucks, maybe down to let's say 23, 24 dollars. Maybe it, you know, went down a little bit, consolidated, and then we might move up again, right? So don't chase it. I'm not chasing it. I'm not in it as a short-term trade, but again, my long-term shares on paper, they're doing fantastic. They're doing extraordinarily well, and I'm super happy with this company. So the next couple of stocks here, let's get into them. BYND, Beyond Meat, this one is crushing it ever since it broke 160. It's been going bananas. It almost hit 200 bucks a couple days ago. Now we're pulling down, testing the lower 180s. Seems like we are holding that uptrend here on the four hour chart, bouncing off of it actually at a higher low. And we actually had a green day today, up 0.6%. So beyond me, I'm liking this dip. It's about $10 off of its highs here. So I'm not rushing it. I'm not rushing it understanding that we could go lower in the stock, but I'm keeping my eye on it, on the momentum here, and uh, it seems like it's selling off after hours, so we'll see. I mean, if we're if we're able to hold mid, uh, mid 180s, I think Beyond could be a nice little swing trade opportunity here, and Baidu, B-I-D-U, guys, crushed it today, up over 7% on the four-hour chart here. You guys can see a very bullish break. Take a look. We broke out of this, what do you want to call this, a wedge? I mean, I call a lot of uh, patterns here a wedge, guys, but that's what it is at the end of the day, right? It broke out of the wedge. We took out the highs from back at the end towards the beginning of July, end of June, right? We broke pretty much every resistance in the past couple of weeks. Now we might end up actually the past couple of months at that. And mind you guys, beyond uh, be, by due here, it has a lot of more upside, a lot of upside. The highs here on the three-year chart is at around 285. So if we break 145, which is the next, the next big resistance, you know, Baidu could see a lot of push here. So watch out for it. It's looking bullish. Today's break is very, very good for the bulls, and I'm excited about it. And we haven't talked about gold, gold stocks, and silver ETFs, gold ETFs here in a while. So let's cover those as they're at a pretty big spot here, similar to what's going on with Baidu, but we didn't break out yet. Again, Baidu ended up breaking out of that wedge, that little downtrend it was in, right? 7% in the green. And GDX is in the same spot, technically speaking, right? But we haven't broke out yet. The second we break out, there could be a lot of upside, right? And GDX here is the, uh, what's it called again? I'm forgetting. I haven't looked at these in a while. It's a gold miners ETF, right? It's a gold miners ETF, and it has a bunch of companies, right? Like New Newmont, a bunch of other companies in there. It's it's a uh, it comprises a bunch of miners, right? And it's about five dollars off of its highs. We're in this downtrending channel here, clearly over the past couple of weeks, months actually, which is why I haven't talked about it in a while, guys. It's kind of been doing its own thing, coasting. But now I'm interested because again, if we break out into the 4142 level. That's going to be huge. And overall, with stimulus, with the dollar weakening in general, and more stimulus coming in the pipeline, the dollar is going to get weaker. Gold is going to do well, right? So gold miners are also going to do well, which obviously they, they mine the gold out of the ground. So these companies, GDX comprised a bunch of these companies. It's, it's an ETF, guys, again. I'm interested in it, right? Especially if we break out. I think there's upside here, maybe to the mid 40s, 
$45. And another one is GLD, which is an ETF that tracks the price of gold. Not a miner's ETF, guys. It strictly tracks the price of gold. This is one that I'm loving. Very similar to GDX in the pattern. It's in a downwards channel, but if we break out 180, I think there's upside to the mid 180s here. You guys can see it. And even higher if we break this 185 resistance from a couple years ago. So, and, and a couple weeks ago as well. So, GLD from 180, I like it to about 190, I think we could get to there. And especially if that stimulus gets pushed through the pipeline, which it is, guys. And another one, last one here, is SLV. SLV tracks the price of silver. Not a silver miners ETF. It strictly tracks uh, tracks. That, that's that that's a tongue twister there, guys. It strictly tracks the price of silver, which is slash SI here. And silver's been beaten down, down about five bucks from its highs. And we're holding the uptrend overall on silver. We're about to break out of the main moving average here on the four hours. So that could indicate a lot of upside coming in SLV. And again, GLD, as both gold and silver, they've been beaten down a bit lately. Silver more than gold. I mean, gold's holding 1900 but you can see the downtrend as well. So just watch for the break in metals. I think it's coming. We just have to wait because we don't know when exactly it's going to come. But the second they break out, keep an eye on GDX, GLD, and SLD. V. So that's it for the video, guys. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button for me. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and let me know all your thoughts down below in the comment section. And yeah, join our Discord chat while you're at it. It's free. Our Facebook group as well. Follow me on Instagram at Stasurfes and claim your two free stocks. Link down below in the description box. All you have to do is deposit $100 and you get two free stocks valued up to $1,600. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks for watching as always. Keep crushing it in the markets. Good luck. Stay safe and peace out.